In a dirted tank ecosystem, a layer of nutrient-rich soil is used as the substrate instead of traditional gravel or sand. This soil layer provides a source of nutrients for the plants in the tank. The tank is then filled with water and live plants are added to create a lush, natural environment. In this video, I want to share how to make a natural planted dirted tank. When choosing soil for a dirted tank, it is important to select a type that is free from additives, chemicals, and fertilizers. Organic potting soil or topsoil are commonly used options. I don't want to take a risk with pre-bagged packs of soil, so I will use soil from my own garden. If you don't have this option, you can use potting soil without chemicals, additives, and fertilizers. I'm shifting the soil to remove unwanted materials. Before adding the soil to the tank, it is recommended to rinse it thoroughly to remove any dust or debris. I'm lucky because today is rainy. I'm letting nature clean the soil for me. River sand is a popular choice for aquariums because it's natural, aesthetically pleasing, and can provide a suitable environment for plants and animals. It is important to thoroughly clean the river sand before adding it to the aquarium. This can be done by rinsing the sand in a bucket or colander until the water runs clear. This helps remove any debris or impurities that may be present. The depth of the sand bed will depend on the plants and animals you plan to keep in the aquarium. For most aquarium plants, a substrate depth of 3 inches is sufficient. Mother Nature provides us with a wide range of materials that can be used in aquariums. Natural rocks can be used to create caves, hiding spots, or interesting structures in the aquarium. It is important to choose rocks that are aquarium safe and do not leach harmful substances into the water. Driftwood adds a natural and aesthetic element to the aquarium. It can provide hiding places for fish and serve as a substrate for beneficial bacteria. Before adding driftwood to the aquarium, it should be thoroughly cleaned and soaked to remove any tannins or impurities that may discolor the water. Natural aquascaping is a style of aquarium design that aims to mimic natural underwater environments. It involves creating a balanced ecosystem within the aquarium, with a focus on using natural materials and plants to create a visually appealing and functional habitat for fish and other aquatic organisms. In natural aquascaping, the aquarium is typically designed to resemble a specific natural habitat such as a river, lake, or forest stream. The layout and arrangement of rocks, driftwood, and plants are carefully planned to create a realistic and aesthetically pleasing scene. The choice of plants in natural aquascaping is crucial as they play a vital role in maintaining water quality and providing shelter and food for fish and other aquatic creatures. Aquatic plants are selected based on their growth habits, color, and compatibility with the chosen habitat. They are often arranged in a way that mimics the natural distribution of plants in the wild. Overall, natural aquascaping is a popular style among aquarium enthusiasts who appreciate the beauty and complexity of natural ecosystems. It requires careful planning, attention to detail, and a good understanding of aquatic plants and their requirements. I didn't like how the top of the glass and the aquarium furniture looked. 
So, I decided to paint them using acrylic paint. This is how it came out. For me, planting is one of the best parts of setting up aquariums and terrariums. I want to start with moss. I used this elastic hairband for the moss. It's easier than other methods. Java moss can be attached to various surfaces in the aquarium, such as rocks, driftwood, or even the substrate. It can also be left floating in the water, where it will form dense mats. The moss has small, branching stems with tiny, triangular leaves that give it a feathery appearance. In addition to its aesthetic appeal, Java moss provides several benefits to the aquarium ecosystem. It serves as a natural filter, absorbing excess nutrients and helping to maintain water quality. It also provides hiding places and breeding grounds for small fish and invertebrates. These plants are all relatively easy to care for and can help to create a natural looking environment in your aquarium. I tried to create a balance between foreground, midground, and background plants. It's important to plant heavily. The more aquatic plants there are and the faster they're growing, the more toxins are absorbed out of the water column. If you plant heavily from the start, it will minimize the chances of algae growth. The plant's growth process will take up most of the nutrients, which leaves none for algae to feed off of. I constantly moisturize the plants during the installation phase. Low-tech plants would have an easier time surviving in these conditions, while fast-growing plants and floating plants will continuously take up much of the ammonia and nitrates when present. Low-tech aquarium plants are plants that can thrive in a basic aquarium setup without the need for advanced equipment like CO2 injection or high-intensity lighting. These plants are typically hardy, easy to care for, and can tolerate a wide range of water conditions. I used bags and a strainer to prevent spoilage of the plants and excessive cloudiness of the water. Floating plants compete with algae for nutrients in the water, reducing the chances of excessive algae growth. This can help to maintain a balanced ecosystem and prevent the tank from becoming overrun with algae. I added this mini water pump for water circulation. There is nothing in it. It will also prevent biofilm. I also added nerite snails. They're the first critters in the system. This snails are very hardworking creatures and they clean the aquarium glass very well. They are harmless to the plants. Monsterous are one of my favorite plants in the world. I thought it would be compatible with this tank and wanted to give it a shot.
I pulled them apart at the stems and cleared the soil. I used wire to attach it to the glass of the aquarium. The roots of this plant will feed on water and absorb excess nitrate. Keeping shrimp in a planted tank can be a rewarding and enjoyable experience. Shrimp are known for their vibrant colors, interesting behaviors, and ability to help maintain a balanced ecosystem. Shrimp are known for their ability to eat algae in aquariums. They are natural grazers and will actively feed on various types of algae that may grow in the tank. Shrimp can help to keep the aquarium clean and free from excessive algae growth. However, it's important to note that shrimp alone may not be able to completely control algae growth in the tank. It's still necessary to maintain proper water parameters, provide adequate lighting, and perform regular maintenance to prevent algae overgrowth. Everything is starting to come together in the ecosystem. The plants have shed their adaptation leaves and their new leaves are developing healthily. It's not too early to add fish. Fish will contribute to the system and accelerate the cycle. As long as I don't add too many fish, I won't have any problems. Plus, I only have to do very little feeding. My aquarium is big, but I added small amounts of schooling fish. Too many fish will damage the system, and I don't like it to be too crowded. By the way, I would like to add this as a note that I have never changed the water in the aquarium. If you've followed this far, thank you for your interest. If you subscribe to my channel, you will make me very happy. I also share current daily posts on my Instagram account. You can take a look there too. You too can set up beautiful aquariums without spending a lot of money. Just trust nature. In the following seconds, you will see the latest version of the aquarium. Enjoy.